Hi, welcome to Mimi Makes. I'm Mimi. Today we're going to make this cute little piece of bread out of felt fabric. It's uh, scaled down to be the perfect size for little hands. This is the first in a series of video tutorials I'm making to teach the craft and the art of making felt play food and other handmade gifts for the people that you love. I hope you'll give a thumbs up to this video and you'll subscribe to the Mimi Makes It Fun channel. Join us on this very fun journey. To make this slice of play bread, you will need some camel and some cream colored felt. Be sure you get wool blend felt. 100% wool felt is very expensive and wool blend felt actually works better. By the same token, in craft stores you can find felt that has no wool in it at all and that's difficult to work with and doesn't hold up well. So wool blend is the way to go. Then you also need some foam. This is half inch foam and it's usually quite easy to find in green. I recommend you not get green because if you put bread on top of it or white felt on top of it, it, it looks like your bread is turning moldy. Uh, you can see the green through it. So I get uh, either white or cream or yellow foam and that works quite well with a piece of bread. Also, you're going to want some thread that matches your lighter color. I recommend embroidery floss, but as you see, regular thread will work as well. And you need some needles get embroidery needles. They have large holes so embroidery floss will fit through it. After you've cut out your Mimi Makes pattern pieces, they'll look like this. Take the two lighter colored pieces and see if they need to be trimmed. You want them to match as closely as possible. This could be trimmed a little, but I think it's good enough. Alright, take one of the pieces and take the camel piece that will make the crust of your bread and you're going to sew it onto here starting at the middle of the bottom. So you take it here. Take your thread that matches this color felt. Now I'm using blue today so you can see my stitches better. I've put a knot at the end of it and what I'm going to do is I will lift this up and sew right through here through the bottom of the piece. This is so we can hide the knot inside the piece of bread. Then I'll place the camel piece over it, bring it around, and just do one simple stitch. From this point on we're going to use the blanket stitch and I have a tutorial on how to do the blanket stitch for lefties and for righties, so take a look for that. To get started with the blanket stitch, one rule to remember is the thread always should be coming from mid the middle of the two pieces that you're sewing together. So I'm going to take this and just place it underneath our first stitch, pull it through, and now we're ready to start doing the blanket stitch. There are all kinds of ways to do the blanket stitch and you can find videos that show you five or six different techniques. But this is a technique that I think works really well because you have control of your thread and because you're stitching from the front to the back, not the back to the front, you can space your stitches more evenly. I really want to emphasize it's not necessary to have perfect stitches. This is a handmade gift and sometimes a few crooked stitches make it clear that this was not by, made by a machine but by your grandma or your uncle or your sister-in-law for the baby. These toys, these felt toys that I make, I always uh, test out on my own grandchildren. And every everything from 18 months on seem to be really enjoying the pieces of felt food. I have one that's just going into kindergarten. And he still plays with them. Now at this point we're going to go around the corner, but this is a good time to just kind of loosen it and stand it up so that your piece gets used to being a crust and not just something flat on the felt. So we'll loosen it a little bit there and then we'll turn the corner. There are several ways to turn a corner in the blanket stitch, but here's the way I like. We've just done our last stitch here and we're going to turn the corner here. So I'm going to take a stitch right about where the next stitch would go and I'm going to take it so it hits the corner. I wrap the thread behind it and hold it as I do for us, the other stitches and just pull it until it reaches the corner itself. And then I just curve the felt around and I continue stitching in a straight line up the side of the piece of bread. 
This is what I consider the basic building block, like the first letter of the alphabet, in making felt food. It happens to be the first piece I ever made for my grandson when he was about two. He was pretending to cook because his dad's a chef, but he was using invisible food, so I whipped up a piece of bread for him, in fact a couple, and some sandwich makings. All of those patterns are available from Mimi Makes, by the way. And he just loved them, so he started asking for other types of food, and that's how I got started as a felt food designer. Making felt food designs that are as close to realistic as I can make them, but scale down for little children's hands. All the materials I use are non-toxic, including the glues that we'll get into with other pieces in the future. So I'm finishing this, and I'm going to finish it just up to the point where there's a little crevice here. And I'll show you what we do for that. And then we'll jump ahead. Some threads tangle, and there are products you can buy, little boxes of wax that you can drag a thread across that really do prevent tangling and are very helpful. Okay, here we are at the crevasse. You can see the little place where the bread dips in, and we want our felt to dip in too. So we'll bend it a little bit and do the next stitch here. under the needle for the blanket stitch. And then what I like to do at this point is just take another stitch to secure it. And then again, because the thread always wants to come from the middle, we'll take the needle underneath and start again. And we'll just follow the piece of bread around, doing an extra stitch in this little dip doing an extra stitch over here, and then we'll bring it all the way back down to the bottom. Now we've worked our way around with the blanket stitch all the way to where we started on the first piece. At this point, I like to just stretch it open all the way around to make it ready for the foam that we will put inside. But let me show you how I finish off the bottom piece. You'll see where the felts meet right here. I put my hand here, and I take my pair of scissors and I cut it exactly where they meet. Your pattern is extra long, so you have the option of doing that. Let me just trim this little bit of felt thread. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're simply going to attach the bottom of the crust to itself. So I will make one last blanket stitch on the bottom bringing the thread to underneath the middle and holding it. You get such control when you do the blanket stitch this way. Whoops, my, my little tag end was too long. There we go. And then I go from there to here on the piece of crust. Look at that. That happens all the time. <laughs> it just goes with the territory, I guess. So we've come out here, and we're going to do kind of a faux or flat blanket stitch just for two or three stitches to attach the end of the crust to itself. So we'll go in here, come out here, put this behind, hold it, there we go. And then we'll do another putting the thread behind and holding it. And then one last stitch, and I didn't sew this really well, but that's okay because you know what? You can always trim. Nothing needs to be precise. It all looks adorable. <laughs> I promise when it's done. Okay, so there we have our last stitch. And what I'm going to do is just take my scissors and trim this to match and we're off. Now when you cut the foam piece out, um, you can cut it exactly on the same pattern and even a little inside and it will almost always at this point be too big. 
But let's see if we can fit it into this one, and if not, it's very easy to trim the foam, and in fact, it might be handy for you to see how I do trim the foam. So here we go, and now it's inside. I love foam, it's so adaptable. I actually don't think we really need to trim it very much, um, but perhaps just a bit on the bottom, and I'll do that so you can see how easy it is. You just take your scissors, you squeeze the foam, and you cut. So we'll do that and make this one just a little bit shorter so it's not quite as difficult to fit perfectly into the little frame we've created with the crest and the bottom piece. Let's try it again. And there we go, that fits nicely. So then we put the top piece on it and center it. Eyeball it so it's fitting well and corresponding to the bottom piece. And then I like to put a pin into it just to keep it right where it is. Because you'd be surprised when you're doing that blanket stitch, it can kind of shift around a little bit. Now what we're going to do is take this and do a stitch here. Just like this. And then because the blanket stitch always starts from the center, we'll go underneath that one stitch. And now we're ready to blanket stitch all the way around the rest of the piece of bread. And when you reach the little crevices and the dips and the dents, as we did before, you'll add an extra stitch there. And every time you add an extra stitch, don't forget to send your needle under the last stitch so you can blanket stitch easily again. So now we're almost completely done and we're back to the beginning on our final piece. You can see the top piece, you can see the crest, and you can see the piece we've just attached. One thing I want to point out is you'll see that the stitches come over just a little bit. It's very easy to just pull these threads and reposition the threads so that everything's even. But you're seeing these stitches right now because I used a contrasting color. I want you to note the stitches are not perfectly even. But when you use a thread that matches your original color, they kind of disappear. Let's finish this now with the final few blanket stitches. And what I like to do, I'm going to take the pin out. And it, sometimes there's a little extra of the crust fabric or sometimes there's a little extra of the um, lighter fabric. Just see if it matches. Ad adjust your stitches a little bit so that you come out even in the end. I'm going to make the last few stitches. Again, pulling the thread behind and holding it for control. We're back to the beginning and here's what we're going to do. We want the thread to go to the original stitch so we'll go through exactly the same place we did last time when we started. Bring it around. And then I take the thread through this way. I go through the loop. Those of you who've done a lot of hand sewing know exactly how to make a knot, but I thought I would demonstrate it. And then I go through the second knot, I, second loop I just created, and I pull, and it makes a nice knot. And then what I do is, I take it and I pull it right through that break where we joined the top and I go through the foam rubber and out the other side. I pull it and then I take my scissors and I push down on the slice of bread and I pull the thread and I clip and the bread will just disappear. I mean the thread will just disappear. And so there you have it. Instead of showing you my demo, I will show you these two little cute pieces of bread. So there you have it. You've made a piece of bread that can be used to build a sandwich. In fact, this free pattern, which can be downloaded for free at our website, MimiMakes.com, is included in our Mimi Makes lunch bag bundle. That bundle, which is available for sale, has patterns and video tutorials just like this one for bread and fixings for a whole bunch of sandwiches. It'll include cheeses and lettuce, tomato slices, crunchy peanut butter, strawberry jam, and other lunch essentials like potato chips, a dessert, and a milk carton 
along with a foldable felt lunch bag. That and many more individual patterns and bundles, all with written and video tutorials, can be purchased at MimiMakes.com. Thanks, Thanks for joining me. I hope the little ones in your life really enjoy playing with this piece of felt food. Most of all, I hope you enjoy making it. Take care.